Killen, and I'm host of The Killen Report, a television show. We are filming in Art Ventures Gallery in Menlo Park, and I have to thank Katarina for inviting us to be here. And my guests today are the former mayor of Palo Alto and a man who's going to represent us in the, the state of California, selection of maybe the next delegates. You can clear that up later. And Bill Whitmer, who is presently the mayor of Atherton, and I think this is the second time he's mayor. And when he's not the mayor, he's a councilman. I'm Ladies and gentlemen, would you like to ask not? these gentlemen uh, some questions? It's a complete no, mandate. no, I know, no, I know that. Ken. Well, it's mandated, but you can do the 50, they can do the five-year evaluation. So um, the climate panel says we have about 12 years before we reach a certain point. <laughs> and cities are not known for making decisions quickly, largely because their constituents prefer a consensus approach. What um, can the general public do to accelerate the change management, in particularly um, acceleration of bike and pedestrian infrastructure, which will allow that 50% of the transportation and greenhouse gas emissions to be tackled through alternative means of transportation. So I think, um, one, the premise of that we, what we've been doing at kind of a leading rate, we now understand is really even more inadequate than we um, and so we're going to have to up our game uh, collectively, both within our cities, nationally, and globally. Within our cities, the grassroots groups have had tremendous impact. Historically, we, we kind of had, they, they, they have two roles. One is enabling citizens to uh, really live in ways that they think are socially responsible. But the more valuable yet impact is how they influence their local communities and how their local communities influence others. And we had Carbon Free Palo Alto, which has been a leader uh, of driving our council together with elected officials who we had a group who were very committed to this. And uh, Menlo Park has Menlo Spark, who is uh, a really great grassroots group. They not only drive those change, but they are the groups that allow for that change to continue and be sustained as we might get a turnover in city leadership of both a city manager and elected officials. And they're what will assure that we have continue that momentum. And I, I see it right now in Palo Alto, that that is of vital importance. Um, so I think that what we've done to date with those grassroots groups has been incredibly impactful, and we need them to up their game. More people driving the leadership even harder. Um, okay. the, Bill, well, right? Well, oh, the, oh, you want to comment? Yeah, sure. Oh, I thought that's minute, how it was going to work. <laughs> uh, first off, I think some of the things that, that Pat brought up were extremely uh, pertinent because city managers and councils change over. Um, what we've done in Atherton is we've built uh, master plans that kind of give the direction. We built them with community input uh, as well as with council approval and staff, uh, with staff help. And so those are our guiding principles as we're building our budgets and as we, we look at what we're going to go do. Um, a number of years ago, I chaired, and I'm still on the com leading the committee for the bike pedestrian master plan and the, and the bike and pedestrian ways within Atherton. Our big focus right now are major transits as well as our safe routes to school. Um, and so, you know, of course, building sidewalks in Atherton, uh, building, you know, widening the roads because we have all the trees and, and the power poles and things that are right near the roadside, having to wire them and, and move things over costs a lot of money, as you know. So in addition to siphoning off some of our money, we also are going after 
local and state grants to, to go ahead and do that. And so we do have a pecking order of where we want to go do that. But right now, one of our biggest plans is go from Redwood City or North Fair Oaks all the way down to, uh, to Palo Alto, or to, to Menlo Park, excuse me. Uh, oh, that's on good. Our, it's, yeah. it's, it's the, it's with the our bike, city managers. With, with our, yeah, with our, our, with our bike lane. Uh, and that involves widening, in some cases, Middlefield Road. Uh, as well as putting up uh, the bike lanes. Um, we also are working with a group of people who are part of the Menlo Park, the north, this part of Atherton is, is part of the Menlo Park School District. We work with the parents groups on where they think there are safe routes to school issues. So, um, so that's what we're, you know, we're working with that. So anyway, hopefully that Bill. answers your question. I'm sorry, Bill. Oh, your mic, wow, excuse me. <laughs> Um, I'm wondering uh, what role these little scooter things, you know, electric scooters, lift and uh, lemon or lime. What? How do they? How will they disrupt uh, traffic? Um, they seem to. I can't tell whether they're supposed to be on sidewalks or on bike lanes. <laughs> You're with everyone else. Um, so uh, Ken and I both have uh, uh, interests in those areas, and they are a big new uh, form of what's now being called micromobility. It's everything below cars and things. And from electric bikes to uh, electric scooters and skateboards and who knows what. Uh, what's happened is in, in essentially the last year, uh, a multi-billion dollar industry has come out of nowhere of shared electric scooters. Uh, they're also privately owned ones. And the cities had not uh, well, no one had seen it coming. Uh, the cities had not, not only hadn't the cities established the structure and the regulations for how they'd manage it, they hadn't even known or identified the problems, nor had really these companies, they're now multi-billion dollar companies, identified the problems, what's more, solved them. So now we're in 2019, which is a year in which we're going from identifying the problems to pretty darn rapidly uh, mandating solutions by cities. And uh, the, it, where they go, whether they're on sidewalks or on streets, treated as bikes or pedestrians, uh, what speeds would be allowed in each of those places, how you put them on, um, on those areas without um, uh, injuring people, uh, the way they're stored and thrown down, how we protect people from injuries and falls. It's a whole gamut of problems, and yet cities are very hesitant to choke it off because they're already seeing measurable impacts on uh, car trip generation in cities. And the most cost-effective thing for a city is elimination of the need for parking spaces. We, we're putting in new parking garage in Palo Alto, which I was not in favor of, and it's $80,000 per space. Uh, and that does not include the annual maintenance. And so looking at ways to instead avoid those car trips is actually economical for cities as well as it hits their horrendous traffic problems, which are not only choking off the quality of life in cities, it's co choking off economic development in cities. Greenhouse gases, air pollution, parking, traffic, these methods have real upsides, but we've got to identify the problems associated with them and address them rapidly. Jim, I mean, last question, and, and then I have a couple little comments. Jim. Well, I've been following, I'm working with Deer Down Station Development in San Jose, which is addressing that issue. They're having a lot of trouble with uh, community outreach because all the local interest groups make a big fuss over improvements because they want the way it used to be. But uh, in Bogota and in Venezuela, they've made great progress in redesigning the streets, pathways for bikes and scooters and things. People resisted like crazy at first, but once they got it, they love it. Right. And if, I'm wondering you know, if we could do some more publicity around you know, what works in other places and, and get people to buy in or, or want to try it out. I don't hear much about what's going on around here. It ties in with uh, Ken's other question on, on the whole grassroots effort. Um, 
and, and points that Bill has made about that you really need to have a community buy-in. Uh, we need to invest in that. We can't just say, we believe that we are right, and we have the answers, and therefore we're going to impose them on others without really bringing them into the discussion and, and addressing their concerns and, uh, and going through a group educational process. Uh, this is really uh, a big part of how we're going to have change. How do we do that and accelerate change becomes even more challenging. So we really have to put a big investment in that part of engaging the community, all of us learning. One of the key things with regards to this issue uh, you know, that really needs to be addressed is not only the safety of the, the rider, but also the safety of the people that are on the walkways or on the streets. Uh, I don't know, you may have noticed that San Jose State it was in the papers today that they banned those scooters on there for safety reasons. So I think that we need to really take a look at the safety issues and, you know, and there's going to be legislation, I'm sure, on helmets and things like that that people need to have. But then, uh, you know, as, as Pat said, I think it's important they, they do take cars off the road, uh, whether it's a, a student without getting his mom to drive him to school, he's going on his own or whether it's somebody commuting to Facebook, okay? So I think that they're, these type of processes are essentially here to stay, but we need to get ahead of them, and we need stakeholder uh, involvement. I also want to share why Katerina Powers, Dr. Katerina Powers, and uh, why she puts these on. She has an interest in being the most important, meaningful, art gallery in the community and our guests I have to thank them Bill and Pat and all of you for attending and I'm sure these gentlemen would be glad to take some more questions as we disband I'm paid by the minute so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for everything okay Say something. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually, See the uh, hug?